Good morning and welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady. It is my mission to help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, nine o'clock-ish. And when you tune into my show, you're gonna hear about topics that are important to the home business community. And today we are talking about IRS getting access to Coinbase customer data. Holy cow. All right. Um, so it is November 30th. So last night about, I guess between about seven and nine o'clock, it really started hitting the social media that the IRS has won its case against uh, Coinbase. They were, the IRS was suing them for access to customer data. Now, let me tell you this. I have been talking about this for months. What did I tell you? I'm not a doom and gloom person. I'm all about a being prepared person, okay? So, um, so you know, I've been talking about this for a few months, and so now here we are, all right? So let's talk about the case itself. So the court ruled that the IRS can legally investigate Coinbase account holders who, have, who may not have paid federal taxes on their virtual currency profits. Now, when, if, when the case first started, the IRS said, we want everybody. And then the court said, that's too much, right? And so then, um, then the IRS comes back and say, okay, well, we'll narrow this down to the people who've moved $20,000 in, you know, in, uh, in currency, in cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin and Ethereum is what uh, Coinbase sells. So that's when they issued the John Doe sur- summons between t- uh, December 31st, 2013 and December 31st, 2015. Okay. So people are really nervous right now about the whole Bitcoin thing. And so here's, so here's the thing. Here's, here's where the IRS wins because it says that the IRS argued that some users of cryptocurrency have openly acknowledged they consider using Bitcoin in order to avoid tax reporting requirements. Can I tell y'all to stay off social media and quit running your mouths? Okay, seriously, because see, it's stuff like this that you know that that really gets stuff started. As you know, as simple as it may seem to you, it's little stuff like this, and I've seen it. So what happens is, um, you see, the IRS argued that Coinbase admitted that the targeted information still involved 8.9 million Coinbase transactions and 14,000 uh, Coinbase account holders. So they so they got access to 14,000 Coinbase users that have either bought, sold, sent, or received at least $20,000 worth of Bitcoin in a given year, all right? So first of all, the case, the case is for account holders that were using Bitcoin from 2013 to 2015, whatever those dates were. And so I saw a few people going live and saying, okay, you don't have to worry. But here's the deal. That's where it's going to start. That's not where it's going to stay. I need people to get this. I, you know, the funny thing is that A lot of people dismissed me, okay? Let's be real. A lot of people dismissed me, dismissed what I was saying. Okay, cool, right? Now, within the last 12 hours, I got people in my inbox that I have not talked to in two years asking me, what does this really mean, okay? So, um, you know, so so here's where we are. So they're, they've only asked for Bitcoin users between 2013 and 2015, whatever those dates are. That's where it's going to start because that's a lot of people still, but that's not where it's going to stay because what's going to happen is they're going to start there and then they're going to gradually work their way to everybody. Understand that Coinbase is a, a third party payment settlement entity, which means they have a reporting requirement of a 1099K. That 1099K goes to the IRS and the 1099K goes to you. If you get the 1099K, you got to report it. Even if you don't get the 1099K, you got to report it, okay? You are responsible for reporting on your worldwide income. Again, I get people asking, well, what if I buy my Bitcoin from a company 
in uh, in Europe. It does not matter if it's on this planet and you earn it on this planet. You are responsible for reporting your worldwide income, including your capital gains, which is what this is. Okay, I have said this before. Uh, cryptocurrency is considered property, kind of like stock, okay? So that means that you earn capital gains and you report those capital gains when you sell your cryptocurrency. Now, where people are going to start getting into trouble is this selling of the cryptocurrency. And so this is what I, what I want to talk about, what you need to be doing right now if you are a crypto user, okay? Number one, you need to keep your business off social media. Quit posting about all your Bitcoin income and quit posting about how you ain't paying taxes. Stop it. The IRS uses social media. If you guys have learned nothing about people losing their jobs over social media, I'm going to really need for you to get that the IRS uses your social media as well. Okay, so number one, keep your business off social media. Stop posting about everything. You ain't got to tell everything that's going on, especially in your financial life, okay? So that's number one. Number two, stop using your cryptocurrency like regular money. It is not. I don't care how widely it's accepted. This is not a good idea, okay? So what's happened is, you know, with more people accepting cryptocurrency, with more people accepting Bitcoin and charities even accept Bitcoin. So people are starting to use you know, their Bitcoin all willy nilly. I see people, see people talking about they buying lunch. I see people talking about they buying cars, they buying TV. I even saw, I buy solo ads. I even saw where they accept Bitcoin to buy solo ads, okay? This is not a good idea. Let me put it into another context for you. If you owned shares of, let's say, oh, I don't know, Coke, okay? Let's say you own shares of Coke. Would you sell your shares of Coke to buy a sandwich? Would you sell your shares of Coke to buy, uh, you know, a TV or some other uh, depreciable goods? Would you do that? No. So don't do it with your Bitcoin. Stop swiping your Bitcoin debit card. It is not cute, okay? Because what you're doing, if you would just keep in your mind that I'm, I'm spending stock to buy stuff. Because see, people understand stock. They don't understand that Bitcoin is not a legal tender, okay? So it's treated like a stock. So if you would start thinking, would I spend my stock on this, then you might make some different decisions, okay? So cryptocurrency is not regular money. It is just not, okay? There's no two ways about it. So that's number two. Number three, start tracking your transactions. If you get my Bitcoin tax guide, bit.ly forward slash Bitcoin tax guide, if you get that, it'll tell you all the information that you need to track. So all of my Bitcoin users that have been going and uh, and spending your Bitcoin all crazy like, you need to go back and, tra and, and track those transactions, okay? And here's what you need to understand. Every transaction, which means every sale, every swipe of your Bit card, every withdrawal, right? If you have over 200 transactions and over $20,000 in, um, in transactions, $220,000, that gets reported to the IRS, okay? Which means the IRS will be waiting for you to report your capital gains or losses, all right? So um, start tracking those transactions because see, every transaction can trigger a capital gains event, all right? every single one and understand that your capital gains rate okay let's talk about the capital gains rate for a minute capital gains you're either going to pay zero 15 or 20 percent for your capital gains okay that's your long-term capital gains that means you have had to have bought your bitcoin and held it for more than a year 
in order to receive the long-term capital gain treatment. Now, most people, most of the people that are in my audience fall into the 25 to 33% tax bracket, okay? If you fall within that tax bracket, then you're gonna pay a 15% capital gains tax. So when you think about um, all the time that you went shopping with your Bitcoin and bought all kind of crazy stuff with your Bitcoin, you still owe the government 15% of what your gains were. And you still owe them, okay? So I need for you to get that. You need to track it. That's going to be reported on a Schedule D, okay? And it's going to show up on line 13 of your 1040, your capital gains line, all right? So you need to start tracking that because I don't know all of the, there's, good Lord, there's all sorts of systems out there and people are still trying to dodge the IRS. I don't know what kind of record keeping is out there for these different places, but the, the responsibility ultimately falls on you. I don't care if it's a simple spreadsheet, you gotta have something that shows all of the necessary information for you to accurately report your capital gains. So this is why I'm saying, I'm not saying that you can't withdraw your Bitcoin, I can't tell you what to do with your money, but if you wanna be smart, you wanna have fewer transactions to track so that it's easier reporting for you and your poor little tax professional, okay? The next thing I'm going to tell you is to get with your tax professionals now, here in December, okay? Um, <laughs> listen, somebody said they cannot see transactions on blockchain, blockchain. There is no personal ID attached to them. Listen, Corey, I'm going to tell you something right now. You can sit there and say that. It is a matter of time. I'm telling you. You will be the same person and there are others like you. I'm not attacking you personally because I really want to get this out there. All right. It is simply a matter of time. So if you want to wait, do you. For my audience, I'm telling you how to prepare. Okay. That's all I'm doing. So please do not come to my audience talking about the blockchain and all of that stuff. I'm telling my audience how to prepare because ultimately it is going to be the taxpayer that has to pay whatever price it is. If you get away scot-free, hey, more power to you. But if the IRS comes to your door, they're showing up at your door. They're not coming for me. So you have to bear that responsibility. So like I was saying, get with your tax professionals, get with your accountants now to make sure that they're up on this because there are a lot of tax pros that are not reading up on this. They don't know dip about cryptocurrency. So you need to be asking your tax professionals and accountants now, okay? You need to be having these conversations now so that when it comes down to file, all right, then, you know, it's not a big mess. That's, this is what I'm saying, okay? So, um, you know, but, but otherwise, listen, I'm not saying don't go buy your, your, your cryptocurrency. I'm saying, listen, <laughs> I'm just saying, listen, because some people got scared and start like selling off. So I'm saying, watch and see if the price drops. And then if the price drops, go get you some more, all right? But just understand that this is not a tax-free game, okay? It's not a tax-free game. And as long as you know that, as long as you know the information that you need to have, and as long as you prepare for that, hey, do you, okay? Seriously. So, that, so that's what I'm saying is that you have to really be a responsible uh, crypto user, okay? And be prepared because he, here's the deal. There is no statute of limitations on fraud, okay? So cryptocurrency is seen as a way for people to avoid taxes and not legally avoid taxes because there are legal ways to avoid taxes. We're talking about tax evasion. There is no statute of limitations on tax evasion. So even if now... If they find out five years from now that, you know, in 2017 that you, you know, made all this money and you didn't report it, there is no statute of limitations. There's no statute of limitations on fraud. So they can just go back until the beginning. 
and then you have to pay. So, um, so yeah, so this is what I'm saying is that be responsible about what you do. Don't put your business out there, right? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Don't put your business out there all on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram all willy nilly. Don't do it. Okay. Like I'm going I'm to need for you. Can we just have some real talk for a minute? I'm going to need for y'all to hush. Seriously. Because the fact is that people take this little tidbit of information and then they run off and do ridiculous stuff based on half information. I'm giving you what, um, what I read, the IRS guidance, okay? So I, this, I'm giving you information from the IRS. I don't work for the IRS. I work for my clients. But I'm coming here to let you know what's happening. I've been talking about this for months. Okay? I've been telling you this is coming. So it's not a matter of if. It's only a matter of when. Okay? I'm just telling you. So you can govern yourself how you want to do. But just know that I come here to tell you what I hear because I keep my ear to the ground for my home business community. That's what I do. Okay? So you can do what you do. I'm telling you how the IRS responds. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate you coming in and joining in the conversation. Listen, grab the Bitcoin tax guide, bit.ly forward slash Bitcoin tax guide. You know, it's, it's time to start booking some consults, people. I'm, I'm not playing. It's time for you to really make sure that your tax professionals, and listen, don't expect when you go to these tax franchises and stuff, don't expect for these people to necessarily know about capital gains and stuff. I'm telling you. All right? So listen, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Home Biz Tax Talk. We air Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And we answer the questions that are important to the home business community. All right. So thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.